Hello children, I hope you are doing beautiful mathematics. In this particular video, we will start a series on geometry for mathematical Olympiads. In particular, how to think about solving interesting problems. In this video, I will show you something called a Kleinian way of looking at a geometry problem. We will see how geometric transformations can radically change how you can solve complicated questions. We will take an example and at the end of the video, I'll also give you a challenge problem. If you can do it, put it in the comment section. Okay, let's get started. So, what is transformation? It's a fancy way of saying the word function. Function. Now, you might ask, what is a function? Well, it's an input-output machine. So, you take some number as an input, let's say x, and you get some number as the output, maybe square of x. So, let's say the but this particular machine, if I plug in 2, I get 4. So, geometric transformations are functions which take input as a point and gives output as another point. I'll give you one example. You know, all of you know this sort of examples. One simple but effective example is a rotation. Let's say rotation by 60 degree counterclockwise. So, if I take the plane, xy plane, and if I take a point A, and if I apply this transformation, this rotation by 60 degree is a transformation. If I apply that, well, I have to say rotation about what point? If I don't say it, it means rotation is about origin. Okay. So, Simply speaking, I take the origin, I take OA, I rotate it by 60 degree and this is the output point. So the input is A, the output is A prime. There are many beautiful geometric transformations. In fact, the Kleinian way, Kleinian way is named after Felix Klein, who is one of the greatest mathematicians of the last century, last two centuries, let's say. The Kleinian way of looking at geometry problems is through transformations. Transformations. So, what you do is that, let's say if you see a triangle and if you see another triangle which is similar to it, this is ABC, this is suppose DEF, and they are similar to each other. You can use any definition of similarity. Equiangular, ratios of sides equal. Be careful though, you have to show these definitions are equivalent. That's a challenging problem. But for the moment, let's say we have two similar triangles. If you are a synthetic geometer, then You'll just use the definition, all angles are equal or all sides are proportional, stuff like that. If you are a Kleinian geometer, you'll say, okay, I have ABC, now I have blown it up. I have blown it up to DEF. So there is a point somewhere, maybe, so this is not maybe, maybe this is not always the case, but I'm just giving you a specific example. So there is a point which is sometimes known as the center of blowing things up. So OA, you extend it and it goes to D maybe. OB, you extend it and it goes to E. OC, you extend it, it goes to F. So in a way, in your mind, this is something you have to train your mind to think about it like this. That if you have a similar, two similar triangles, what I have done here, I found a point O such that I can blow up one triangle and make it into another one. 
this sometimes known as homotheity, this particular transformation or dilation. And there are many, many other transformations. But my point is, whatever concept of geometry you are dealing with, thinking about it in, tra in terms of transformation is the Kleinian way of doing geometry. And today, we will be training our mind to do just that. Okay? So how do we go about doing it? We want to work on a classical problem. It's a very beautiful problem. Most of you will know it or may have heard about it. The problem is this. Suppose you have a triangle ABC. You have a triangle ABC and you mark the midpoints of the three sides of the triangle. Maybe this is X, this is Y, this is Z. This particular triangle is sometimes known as the medial triangle. The medial triangle. And what you do is you join the points A and X, B and Y. These are clearly the medians, right? And we all know that medians of a triangle pass through a same point. And that point is known as the centroid, G. We also know another thing. We know that AG over GX is equals to 2 is to 1. AG over GX is 2 is to 1. Now, so far, whatever I have said is not anything new. But now what I'll say is another way of thinking about the same thing. And then we will solve a part of a very interesting problem. So, what we will do is, we will think of G, the centroid, as the center of homotheity. I just talked to you about homotheity a second ago. It's blowing up things. It's blowing up things, right? But here, the center of homotheity is G. So we are blowing up things about G, with respect to G. G is the place where our eyes are, okay? And the ratio is minus half. What is that? Okay. So let me explain. So if OA is the original length and the ratio of homotheity in this particular picture, it's probably 2 because OA is doubled. It's doubled. So OA has become OD. It has doubled. That ratio is called the ratio of homotheity. What if it was half? Then I would have gotten this particular point, A prime. So, OA squished. But what is minus half? Well, you just go in the other direction. So here, the, it's minus. If, if it was half, it would have been here. The point A would have been here. But since it's minus half, it's in the other direction, other side of G. So, the point X is the image, is the image. And clearly so, because we already know AG by GX is 2 is to 1. So, GX, this particular length, is half of AG. So, the length matches up and it's on the other side. So, it's minus half. Ratio is minus half. Okay. I hope this much is clear. So, now you can think of the medial triangle as the homothetic image of the main triangle ABC. The main triangle ABC. Okay? Alright? Now, let's do one thing. Let's quickly draw the circumcenter of the main triangle. I'll erase some of the detail because it will create some uh, confusion. So, let's suppose this point is O. I'll join OX such that OX is the perpendicular. You know how to draw the circumcenter. You draw the perpendicular bisectors of the side. They meet at a point and that point is the circumcenter. So we have, we already have the midpoints. 
we only have to raise the perpendicular and wherever the meet that's O perfect so this point O this point O is the circumcenter of the main triangle ABC of the main triangle ABC right what we will do is we will extend this OX a little bit so we will extend it to let's use a different color here my claim is, let's call this point T. My claim is, OT is perpendicular to ZY. OT or XT is perpendicular to ZY. Now, why is that? Notice that Z is the midpoint, Y is the midpoint. So, ZY by midpoint theorem is parallel to BC. ZY is parallel to BC. We have constructed OX to be perpendicular to BC. So surely it is perpendicular to anything that is parallel to BC. Therefore, it's parallel to ZY. It's parallel to ZY. So BC is parallel to ZY. AB is parallel to XY. And AC is parallel to ZX. So what we have here essentially, XT is perpendicular zt is perpendicular so we have two perpendiculars of the medial triangle meeting at o which means o which is the circumcenter of abc is the orthocenter orthocenter means place where the perpendiculars intersect is the orthocenter of xyz the medial triangle circumcenter becomes orthocenter of the medial triangle. One last thing and we will be done. Let's draw the orthocenter of the main triangle. So I drop the perpendiculars like so, like this. I've dropped two perpendiculars and this is the orthocenter H. I know that XYZ, XYZ, this medial triangle is homothetic to ABC, the main triangle, about G. G is the center of homotheity. About G with the ratio, with the ratio negative half. That means all the points of the main triangle, all the important points of the main triangle will have images under this map, under this transformation. So orthocenter will go to orthocenter, circumcenter will go to circumcenter, in center. So all the important points of ABC will also move inside XYZ, the medial triangle, under this transformation. In particular, H will move to O. H will move to O through G. H will move to O through G because that G is the center of homotheity so that Ratio is minus half, so H will, in your mind, it should be like that. It's moving to the other side and it's half of the length on the other side. So H moves to O. So indi uh, indirectly, we have proved that H, G, O are in the same straight line. They're collinear. And I have the challenge problem right now for you. Can you tell me what is the ratio of OG over GH? With the things that we have discussed so far, notice how we change the way we are thinking about this geometry problem. We are not thinking about a medial triangle right away. We are thinking about 
the point A moving to point X, point B moving to point Y, point C moving to point Z, and all the orthocenter moving to orthocenter. The circumcenter, you can think about what's happening to the circumcenter as well. Everything is happening. All of these motions are happening about the point G. So essentially, right now, in your mind at least, this is a moving picture. It's in your, in your notebook, but it's moving inside your mind. All the points are moving inside your mind. And with some years of training, you can really effectively think about geometry problems like this and have a lot of fun. Thank you for watching the video. If you liked it, please subscribe to our channel. You can also join our community. Check the link in the description for the outstanding Olympiad research and leadership programs that we have. Talented and interested students, hundreds of them are with us from all around the world in this alternate, beautiful, challenging path of education. I think you'll love it as well. I will see you in the next one.